Oh hey, didn't see you there. Welcome to Saltwater Fishing 101. I'm your instructor, Justin Carlton. A little bit about myself. I've been fishing in Florida since before I can remember. I grew up on the intercoastal waterway of Fort Pierce. From the depths of the Atlantic Ocean to the small ponds in northern Florida, I've fished them all. I've been fishing here in Tampa Bay for the last 14 years. You'll be hard pressed to find a more diverse ecosystem. This area has hundreds of species of fish to choose from. Today, we're going to focus on four. Those four are the Tampa Bay Super Slam. See you guys in class. Good morning, class. My name is Justin Carlton, and welcome to Saltwater Fishing 101. Let's get started. The course objectives today, the learner will be able to use their working knowledge of how to recognize, locate, and catch and prepare a Tampa Bay Super Slam. On our day on the water, don't forget your hat and some good sunscreen. Oh, and wait, don't forget your fishing pole either. What is a Tampa Bay Super Slam? And no, it doesn't have to deal with wrestling. Tampa Bay Super Slam is when you catch all four of these species, a snook, a redfish, a spotted sea trout, and a flounder. Oh, not that flounder. That flounder. First up, let's get to know the snook. The Latin name for a snook is Centropumus undecimalis, or known as, better known as, the sergeant fish or rabala. Common length in the tip barriers 20 to 30 inches and up to 15 pounds. The world record snook for was caught in Costa Rica. The, he is 59 pounds, 8 ounces. 47.6 inches long. The largest snook caught in the U.S. is 44 pounds, 11 ounces. Next up, notice that the snook is drab in color as are most centropodomids. They are silver with a dark coloration to the back of their fin. This is more pronounced if they are in darker water. This fish here was caught in a little lighter water, so his isn't as, as pronounced. Y'all, they also may have yellow caudal fins, which is more pronounced if they are in the uh, breeding season. And their distinct characteristic is this black line that runs from its tail all the way up to its gills. Next up, snook or red drum, Latin name, Cyanops ocellatus, also known as a redfish, channel bass, spot tail bass, or simply reds. Here in Tampa Bay, we typically, typically catch them from 80, 18 to 30 inches. If you're lucky enough to catch one over 30 inches, this is referred to as a bull red. The world record redfish is 94 pounds, two ounces. That is 60, it was 64 inches in length. That is five and a half feet long. Florida record is 52 pounds, five ounces. Redfish are dark red or copper in color with their, which fades down to the white on their bellies. As a snook, if they are in darker water, they will be darker and lighter water, they become lighter. Their main characteristic is this black dot right there. It's called a black eye spot. Some people think that this black eye spot is to throw off predators when they're trying to come eat them. The predators will think that the eye spot is the fish's head and it'll attack their tail so that they can get away. Next up is a spotted sea trout. Cyanocyon nebulosus, also known as speckled trout. Speck, or just, or just simply trout. Common length in the uh, Tampa Bay area is 12 to 24 inches, up to five pounds. If trout are caught over eight pounds, we typically call these gator trout. Oh, do I have your attention now? Thought you guys might want to uh, might like a better picture of just than me holding a fish. Trout are silver, 
They had very smooth, slimy skin that with thousands of tiny little scales on them. This slime is a protectant for their skin. Good way to protect the slime coat if you're releasing a fish is to use a dehooker, which you can find at most sporting goods stores. If you do not have a dehooker, wet your hands before you handling them and handle them as little as possible. Trout have two, dis two distinct characteristics. First of all, they have these little black spots, dozens of them, or better known as speckles. Also, trout have canine teeth, which are pictured right here. Don't try this at home. Next up is a gulf flounder. Latin name, Paralictus albigata, a, also known as a fluke. Common fluke in Tampa Bay area are 15 to 20 inches. Larger flukes or larger flounder caught are, if they're big enough, they're called doormats. Common weight is one to five pounds. World record is 22 pounds, seven ounces. Oh, how did that guy get in there? He keeps coming up. There's the real flounder. Sorry it's from so far away. I tried to zoom in, but this belly kept getting in the way. As you can tell, this is caught at the beach. Very clear water, as with the redfish and the snook. The darker the water, the darker the fish will be. This is very light water, so it's very light fish. This flounder are gonna be brown, light brown to dark, black, they're going to have white spots on them and with a few black spots on them. This is the underbelly of the flounder. It is very snow white. You can see the gills are right here. It's got the gills on the side, but both of the eyes are on the, the brown side of the fish. Flounder are flat fish, which means they lay on their sides. They also swim on their sides too. They lay on the bottom waiting for uh, fish or crustacean to climb over top of them. And their main characteristic is that they are flat. As you can see here, both eyes are on the same side and they lay on the bottom. Habitats. One of the good things about this slam is all the fish are caught in the same area. Even though it may not be their favorite habitats, we will look at some, each of the species' favorite habitats. First up, snook. Snook like to hang around shorelines, dock seawalls, backwater lagoons, mouths of, river, mouths of rivers. And like most Floridians, snook like to visit the beaches in the summertime. Also, when snook become larger, they go to deeper channels, inlets, and around bridge piles. This one here left is a local uh, inlet not too far from here. These here are a group of snook hanging around a bridge piling at night. Snook's favorite habitat is a deep trough along a mangrove shoreline. Next up, redfish. Redfish are found in shallow water along grass flats, mud flats, salt and saltwater marshes. On the grass flats, they like to hang out in these sandy areas called potholes. On the mud flats, they go around these uh, rocky looking things are called oyster beds. And in the, on high tides, they like to get up on the, in the gra thick grass around here and eat the crustaceans and smaller fish that hang out in the protection. Redfish are known to be in such shallow water while feeding that part of their bodies hang out of the water. Right here, their tails are out. Usually it is their tails out because they have mouths on the bottom side of their faces. Unlike snook, they, it means they have their heads down, they have their mouths down, and their tail sticks up out of the water. This is known as tailing. 
Redfish's favorite habitat is near an oyster bar on a mud or grass flat. Fish these on high tide with the water movement, with the tide going out and the water movement. Next up, spotted sea trout. Spotted sea trout are very plentiful in Florida waters. They can be found most inshore waters throughout Florida. Anywhere the, from surf and jennies to grass flats to uh, shell islands and coastal rivers. Spotted sea trout are very uh, aggressive which makes them a good target if children are in the boats. A child's favorite uh, fishing area are the sandy holes on the deeper edges of grass flats. Next up is a gulf flounder. Gulf flounder like, uh, like to stay on the sandy or muddy bottoms of the bay. They try to stay near bridges, docks, rock piles, grass flats, or even at beaches. The flounder's favorite area to be is an estuary. Estuaries are a partly enclosed coastal body of brackish water with many, with one or more streams or rivers flowing into it and a free connection to the open gulf. Tampa Bay has many estuaries. Look for deeper holes around the mouths of the rivers here. Favorite baits for these four species? As I mentioned earlier, all these four species hang out in the same areas, which means all of the same prey and bait is going to be in these same areas. We're going to look at the species' favorite live baits and artificial lures. Next up, snook. Snook, as you can tell, like to eat small fish. From the scaled sardine to the pinfish, the mullet, and in the winter time, they usually go to shrimp. Snook are ambush feeders. He waits in a hiding spot until bait comes along and then he attacks as lightning fast. Snook love to eat a wide variety of fish from greenbacks to mullet in the winter time when schools of bait are, are less plentiful they turn to eating shrimp. The favorite bait for snook is a greenback sardine or a scaled sardine. Artificial lures for snook. We have a topwater lure, hard jerk baits, spoons, bucktail jigs, and plastic lures. Snook are if snook are in the feeding mood, they will eat an artificial lure that looks like a swimming or a shrimp hopping off the fish swimming or a shrimp hopping off the bottom. With the jig or the spoon, you can use a small piece of bait, usually a shrimp. It's called a tippet. It helps give the scent a little bit of a shrimp scent to the artificial lure. Snook feed best on moving tides, usually two hours before high tide or two hours after the high tide in the, in the moving water. They also feed better on solar lunar activity. This is a hypothesis that animals and fish move according to the location of the moon and, and according to their bodies. Next up, redfish. Unlike snook, redfish have mouths, like I already said, they have mouths on the bottom of their face. They like to eat shrimp and crabs that are crawling around on the bottom, but they will eat fish as well. Redfish are attracted by scent. So a good cut ladyfish, a fresh cut ladyfish that's bloody, or a fresh cut blue crab that is smelly will attract these fish on certain certain times of the year. That's artificial lures for redfish. We have topwater lures. We have a mirror lure at Meridian. We have spoon. We have plastic lures up here. And we have plastic shrimp. My favorite, 
is pictured right here in the middle. It's a Johnson spoon. It's called a Johnson Sprite. Spotted sea trout, live baits for them, shrimp, mud minnows, tin fish, scaled sardine or herring, adding a uh, built in, uh, adding a cork with a built in fish attractor to the line will help get fish stimulated if they're not biting. It'll also help keep your bait above the grass so it doesn't get tangled. This is the built-in popping noise. You just reel in the slap, give it a quick jerk or pop, and it makes a gurgling which draws the fish in. Artificial lures for trout include top waters, plastics, gulp baits, the Rapala x wrap the Mirror Lure Mirror Dean, and a plastic shrimp. My number one fit, my number one lure for catching big trout is this Mirror Lure Mirror Dean. It's called You can also add a popping cork here to the plastic shrimp or the plastic lure. It'll help attract fish if they're uh, not in a biting mood. Gulf flounders up next. We have mud minnows, fiddler crabs. Watch out for this pincher right here. It's a whopper. We have shrimp and pinfish. Since flounder like to stay on the bottom, we either have a small sinker or a popping cork with the bait either on the bottom or just above the bottom. Gulf flounder also like artificial lures. See here we got plastic shrimp, bucktail jig. Remember we can put the tippet on the bucktail jig. We have plastic lures and we have gulps. Gulps are plastic lures that are scented. They're made out of actual live bait fish. Use a slow presentation, bounce the bait off the bottom of the uh, mud hole or the sandy bottom in the grass flat, it should get a strike. As you've noticed, all of these lures are about the same. They can work because they, have, they live in the same areas, they have all the same prey, they have all the same bait. All right, now that we've caught now we know how to locate the fish, we know how, what they like to eat, and we know what they look like. Let's check out some rules and regulations set forth by the Florida State uh, Fish and Wildlife. These laws are set forth to help maintain the populations of various fish. These laws will ensure that generations will have the same opportunities as we do today. First up is a snook. There are two size limits for snook, one on the Atlantic and one on the Gulf, which is in Tampa, which is Tampa Bay. The, the Gulf size limit is not less than 28 inches or more than 33 inches. The season is closed December 1st to the end of February and May 1st and again May 1st through August 31st. The bag limit for snook is one per person per day. If you're going to keep a snook, a snook permit is required to harvest. $10 stamp purchase when a saltwater license is required. Next up is a redfish or a red drum. Size limit for these is 18 to 27 inches. If you're in the northeast zones, northwest zones, it's one, uh, two per harvester per day. Down here in Tampa Bay, we're in the south zone, so we can only keep one a day. One per person per day. Next up, sea trout. Minimum size limit, they need to be more than 15 inches, less than 20 inches. May possess one fish out of your bag limit over 20 inches. The bag limit here in the southwest, which is Tampa Bay, is four per harvester per day. They are open year round. Gulf flounder. Size limit. 12 inches in total length. Bag limit, 10 per day, per person. It is, and I put this up here. You can use spears, gigs, hook and line, seine, or cast nets to catch these. All right. Recipes. 
My favorite recipes for each of these fish, for snook, is a crispy fried snook with chips and tartar sauce. Don't worry, I have all these recipes printed out for you. I'm going to hand them out at the end of the class. Red drum or black and red fish. Spotted trout, we have a grilled or boiled sea trout with mango salsa. My favorite is griddle. Gulf flounder, crab meat, stuffed flounder. Mm, it is to die for. Questions? How do we catch the blue and yellow flounder? 